So the last talk of the, of the day, uh, John Clippinger, another old friend. Uh, so John, for uh, two decades, has been at the Harvard Law School and the MIT Media Lab. He has a PhD in both artificial intelligence and linguistics, and he's the founder of four companies. So uh, John is interested in decentralized autonomous organizations and authorities. He's currently involved in the design of crypto token protocols for the trusted sharing of data in local economies. You know, we're working with so much data and we, ha you know, we have to solve this problem of, uh, of privacy and uh, data security. Yeah, thank you very thank much. You. Well, it's great to be here, and, and having heard everything that's preceded me, um, it's, it's, it's interesting to see there are certain themes that are emerging here, and, and not the least of which uh, is this idea of bottom-up and being able to use data and actually use data to drive a lot of different processes. And so what I'm going to be talking about is a, a concept of the city commons, creating a commons, and the use of blockchain. Quick question, how many people know what the blockchain or hurt, know something about the blockchain? Okay, it's pretty, and what about Bitcoin? Okay, we got some on. Well, what I want to talk about is, is the importance of data. And data is really the, the blood of sustainable, of uh, uh, really sustaining in vital cities. And, and we think of data as oil, but it's really, it's more like water, and, it, and it, it is an input. It's not a set of observations. It's something that's really a necessary process. And what we have here then, is when you have the gig economy, data is what fuels the gig economy. It's the smart cities, maker cities. It's just not collections of observations. This is people, we think of it that way, but it's much more so that. And we cannot have these gig economies, these shared economies, unless we have data. Data is the essence of it. This is a video of a, a, a virtual world. It was done by a Japanese artist. And it shows, it illustrates the, perhaps a dystopic future when you have more data in the virtual world than in the physical world. You have to be able to navigate the virtual world in order to participate in the physical world. When you look at the public spaces, they're going to have overlays, virtual overlays. There's a new layer of life that's coming in that you're going to inter interact with. It's going to create a new kind of public spaces. So we think of data in, the, in an archaic sense that we just think of as observation. It's a new medium. It's a new medium in which we're going to live and create new kind of cities. And it's going to be essential for all sectors of the cities. I mean, we think of this, the industrial model of infrastructure is fairly static and fixed. And we think of a structural hierarchy as a basic organization. But these things are going to be dynamic. They're going to be data-driven. You're going to allocate seats. You're going to allocate, get jobs. All of it's going to be data-driven. But there's a moral hazard in data collection. Because you get to know everything about people. It can be the most intimate details. And who's going who's gonna, to accept that responsibility? Right now, people are making lots of money off of it. But we have to come up with a set of principles by which to govern the use of data. Because we have the phone. The phone is the great enabler of this. But is an iPhone, spy phone, my phone. It collects me, it knows me, it's collecting data about me. That data is being monetized but it's not being verified, it's not something I control, though, I bone, it's, though it's my phone. So this, 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 this instrument is absolutely critical to how we're going to, to create a trusted society. And so how do we make sure the data isn't hacked? How do we ensure it's not being, this is a new surveillance state? Who are the trusted authorities? Our notion of data governance is very archaic. We still think of data in the old sense as something that has to be contained. It's not a new medium. So we have to come up with new notions of authority because everything is being virtualized. And that's really important because we're creating a totally artificial data environment where every data element is something that's constructed. Do we know where it came from? Can it be validated? Who's in control of it? Who, do, who benefits from it? This is what's happening in the virtual world because we could totally be spoofed and be, be turned into a very ar archaic or uh, dystopic world. So these are some of the classic problems, some of the issues that you have when you're creating a new data ecology. Issue of identity, identity. do I control my identity? Data, data, governance, security, privacy, trust. All these issues are classic problems. They're gonna be paramount in creating, quote, the smart city, the vital city, the next generation city. And this is where the blockchain comes in. And I can't, get this, I can't do details in blockchain other than say it's a decentralized ledger that everything gets validated. And it's a peer-to-peer -peer network 
where everything looks at everything else. There's a lot of resiliency and redundancy, and it's cryptographically based, and so there are chains of blocks that are secured. But it can become the basis for a data commons. And this is a vision that we've never been able to have before, where in a sense it's for the benefit of everyone, but it's not controlled by anyone. It's, it's, it's for mutually generated benefit. And that's a new kind of value proposition than we're seeing it before. It's really not a private sector, a public sector, it's really an open sector, it's a commons. And what enables this is the ability to give people control over a person, their data. This, this kind of stuff is now being implemented it's a lot, and it's actually part of the EU data regulations, but in a sense, I control my own data. It doesn't go to Google. I don't have to get it from Google. I don't have to get it from Amazon. It can be verified in my own container in a cloud. And with that, you have what we call a tokens commons protocol. It's a, co a protocol, and that's what was driving a lot of this new technology, whereby you have tokens, tokens of value, tokens of trust. I make certain assertions, and these tokens work in smart contracts. They act at what they call oracles and they have data, and they allow you to release data and control data and control the flow of it algorithmically. And what becomes important is, is that, not so much when we think of the physical state of a city, but it's how people interact. So you have, you have the hydro, the speaker's corner on the lower right, you have a meetup, you have the agora in, in Greece where you have the great conversations. That's what we want, and that's what a commons can be. A city commons is not just a physical district, it's a way in which people interact. The key element to that is going to be the data. That's going to create the, the, the key medium. So if you want something in an innovation district or you want entrepreneurship, it's really the interactions. It's the human dimension of this that's going to be shaped by the data. And that's why things like the, the city scope is so important. To collect the data and the data that you verify and you know, it's going to be sort of the, it's going to use to govern that commons and allocate resources in order to maintain certain key values. This is a very different way of thinking of governance of cities. And so you have this notion of, of moving into a network city where things are adaptive. It's adaptive, it's not a fixed system. It's always dynamically changing and allocating different kinds of resources based upon certain key values that we've caught in, say, the city scope. A different vision of the future. So that cuts across all sectors. So when we talk about this, we want to make a switch. And we're working on creating tokens to facilitate that switch from fossil to sustainable. These all go together from centralized, decentralized, from static to regulational. And you really want to have a generative commons. And there are ways of implementing that technologically, and the blockchain creates a huge role in that. Thank you very much.